Hello everybody and welcome back to the coolest dog training channel right here on YouTube. I'm Tom Davis, America's canine educator. Thank you for joining me right here today. Today we are working with a small dog named Bear. I am starting to get really fearful when I take her to places like um, the groomers or the vet or anybody that she doesn't know really well and then she also feels that I might be slightly nervous about. Um, recently when I took her to the vet, she, um, she broke skin on one of the vet techs and she screamed. So this dog is a smaller dog dealing with severe separation anxiety. This dog has been to the veterinarian, has actually nipped the veterinarian or the vet tech before. So this dog really just doesn't know what to do in situations with people that she doesn't know or she's not comfortable with. So she pretty much lives her life with a lot of insecurities every single day, being very codependent on her owner for happiness and guidance in a very unhealthy manner. My, the number one thing that I want to try to figure out is, which is the aggression and the fear. Uh -huh. um, because I... And they kind of go like that, you know, the aggression and the fear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As you can imagine, that's very frustrating for the owner and also the dog. She's really going through her life very afraid of things that she should not be afraid of and not being able to be a dog. Now, in this session, you'll see that the owner definitely contributes a lot of different things to make these things happen. You can't be a dog lover trying to get to know her. You have to be a leader on any level. Walking in, grabbing a leash and walking. She's going, who are you? Are you gonna kill me? Oh God, what do I do? So it doesn't matter if you have a bigger dog or a smaller dog, this video is really great for anybody out there that's dealing with insecurity issues or if your dog's just fear fearful of things that they shouldn't be. Um, is when I got a little dog, I like to travel, and I was hoping that she would be, she would also like to travel, but she right. hates to travel. Okay. Um, How old is she right now? She's four. Okay. So she doesn't like to go to new places with new people. That's that's. She does not like to go new places okay. with new people. Okay. Okay. So uh, all right. So it sounds like you have a, a smaller dog, four years old, needs help with um, confidence building because yes. I think the fear and the insecurities is what's creating the. That's what's bubbling up to create the other things. Yes. The freak outs at the vet, mm -hmm. freak outs anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, that's what's like also then programming and enticing like the biting and, and just like ah, yes. backing up. So as soon as she walks into a room, she almost has like this fight or flight. Yes. She gets into like, mm -hmm. I'm either trying to get the heck out of here yep. or I'm just gonna try to fight everybody off. Uh, I took her to an obedience class like 16 weeks and I was like, oh man, if we do this for 16 weeks. Once a week? Once a week. Yep. Um, 16 sessions. 16 sessions. Right. It's yeah. um, a lot, yeah. And I was like, oh man, by the time, like, she'll be fine with the car, like, because we'd be doing this consistently. What age was that? Um, this was a year ago. Go ahead. Um, 16 weeks, she hated every second of it. Every time. Every time. Okay. Every time she hated So even to now, she doesn't like training? Oh no. Okay. She doesn't, yeah. She doesn't. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think. Every single one of those 16 sessions, as soon as she came into a kind of a facility, not exactly like this, um, maybe it doesn't matter. Just a new place. Um, she stood and looked at the door constantly. It's like she shook and looked at the door. Right. Because she knew that was right. her way to survival, I guess. Right. I got it. Okay. So... Also, make sure you watch to the end of this video to play Tom's Trivia, a fun little game we like to play to see if you guys at home really know your dog stuff. And it's, I'm sure it, it's like 99% me, because I'm now fearful. Right. I'm now fearful when I take her to places, what is she going to do? <coughs> sure. Um, you know. All right, so what I want you to do now is I want you to just walk, try to walk around the room and get her acclimated for two minutes, and then we'll get to work. Okay. All right? So in my opinion, I feel like... Again, I have to be empathetic to say, like, I know you don't want to leave your owner, but at the same time, I, I haven't caused you any harm, and I'm not asking you to do anything outrageous. So I want to switch to a different collar, probably, and see how she does with a little bit more pressure. Because right now, again, like, I understand where she's coming from. She's like, I think you're going to kill me. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I'm like, but I'm not. So I need to be able to draw her out a little bit more to help her understand that the boogeyman doesn't exist. So I'm going, so we got to teach her that things are okay. Bear, come, come on, come on. 
Let's go. Come on. Come on. So it's all like fear-based stuff. Come on. Bear. Come on. Come on. Good. Good job, bear. But watch. See that? So as soon as I get further away from you, she then feels more comfortable out here. Come on. Come on. I know, I know. Shh, 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 shh. It's okay. Shh. It's okay. So I'm just going to use my body pressure to let her calm down a little bit. Like if I followed her and released that tension, she's not getting over. Like, I'm not going to kindergarten hanging on to the minivan type thing. If you're just like, yeah, you're right, you're not ready for kindergarten, you're 10. <laughs> Let's go back home and wait again next year. It's not, it doesn't do her any good. So it's a little bit different with dogs because you have to put them through different, you can't, I can't talk to her. I can't say, hey, I'm, a, I'm an all right guy. Like, you know, I have to literally show her that things are okay. So by me just standing next to her, it'll help her confidence with me. Okay, come here. That's a good girl. Good girl. Okay. So of course in the in the vet office they're not gonna take nearly as much time and have nearly as much patience. A because they don't have time to do that. B, it's not their job. And C, they don't know really how to do all of that. It's you, you need like the perfect storm of a dog to be okay to go into the vet office. A lot of times dogs do not like it because it's very time time management for them. You're in, you're out. You're in, you're out. You're in, you're out. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. They're not listening. They're being aggressive. Sedate, sedate, sedate. See you next time. Boom. Next one, next one, next one, next one. And, the, and that's why dogs don't ever really have the opportunity to become more confident and less stress in a vet office because they simply don't spend the time. So I always suggest to people to just go there without a, just call them and say, hey, my dogs are terrified of you guys. I'm going to come hang out in the waiting room for an hour if that's okay. And just do that once a month, twice a month, once a week, whatever you can possibly do to get them associated with something good there. But that's why, because their veterinarians are not good with animals. Like on the contrary of what people would believe, they spend out of the years of going to vet school, sometimes no handling education, none, zero. And then if they do do it, it's like a 10 hour course, 20 hour course. They spend, and that's okay, because I would rather my veterinarian know what to give my dog, procedures, science, medicine, than be a behavioralist, if you will. But, so if you're watching her behavior here, she wants to get to you. And if I let her, it doesn't help her, but she'll be, she'll be more comfortable. So what I'm doing is see how she keeps circling back to me. And then if I let her out, and then I stop her, there, come here. Good girl. She does come all the way back to me. Shh, it's okay. Hey, come here. Hey, come here. Yeah, it's a good girl. Good. And then she finds comfort with me as well. So she's saying, your second string, your, your, your first pick, you know. So she's, she is pretty easy to, to put trust into somebody, but you have to do it in the right way. So you can't be, you can't be a dog lover trying to get to know her. You have to be a leader on any level. Walking in, grabbing a leash and walking. She's going, who are you? Are you gonna kill me? Oh God, what do I do? And then if you're going, it's okay, but it's like a movie where people get really close to her and because she's little, they talk really high and then she's really freaking out and then that's where she'll be a rattlesnake. She can, bam, and then she'll just fire off. And that's what you do not wanna do because she's already immediately looking at you like, oh, and then you present all that and she doesn't know what that is. So the best thing to do is to just grab the leash and if, if anything, like just tell the people, hey, just ignore because she's not going to care if you just ignore because she's trying to figure you out. So if you just are neutral, you're going to be good. What? 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 Oh, yes. Yes. So, hey, where's the good girl? Oh. Hey. Hey. Where's the good girl? Oh, yes. Where's the good girl? So if I get really submissive with her, she kind of submits with me. She's like, she feels like me being submissive with her. And she kind of tells me too, like, I'm okay. <laughs> and right now I'm not holding her, but I'm trying to get her more comfortable with me without her running away. Oh. 
So she, this is very typical. She's yo-yoing back and forth. She's going, I gotta go that way. And I'm like, no you don't. And she keeps going. So now I'm gonna give her what she wants as well. Come on. Let's do it. Freedom! Woohoo! So basically what this is, is right now she is fighting that slip collar. So that slip collar is coming up and just giving her a little restriction, okay? But it's only one point of pressure. So with this, these are not, so when a dog does this, it, that's not the correction. So when a dog does this, this does, these don't hurt, like these aren't sharp or anything. A lot of people think that the correction is coming from the dog pulling against this, which is causing uncomfortability and that's not it ever. Because they will pull through this all. They'll prove if you don't use this right, they'll pull through it just like that. This this is not the correction. This that's not how you use this. So what what the correction is is when the dog comes, you just do a little pop like this. And so what this does is it harnesses all of these different prongs up into one single correction and gets the dog's attention and try to yes, of course. So when a dog pulls against it, this is what it does. And then imagine that with a layer of fur. So what I'm gonna be doing is doing this. Hey, 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 hey. And so these aren't sharp. So this is not yeah. the correction. Yeah. It's, it's getting their attention like this. Gotcha. Okay. And um, so I wanna try this to see if this will be more effective for us. So this, what? So it's, as you can see, it's not like gonna be this dramatic. A lot of people do think. As soon as that comes on, they're gonna go, ah! If she was gonna do that, she would have done it with the slip, just f from the pressure. So this just allows me to work with her more effectively and a lot less pressure. Because with that, she's gonna go and choke herself out. And with the harness, if, if I didn't have a collar actually on her to dictate her power steering, she's just gonna sit in that harness and just do the Roadrunner until basically she gets either too tired or I give up. I have no option to go none when that happens. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the collar and I'm trying to eliminate the amount of pressure that we give her on the leash to teach her that if she works with me, it's okay. And then over time, the macro or the bigger picture, she's gonna go, this isn't so bad. So the, the micro and the small picture, she's going, why does this guy want me to go over here? And she doesn't see that. It's just like kids going to school. Kindergarten through whatever is gonna get them into college than real world. It's the same thing that I'm trying to do here, just on a different level. Don't forget guys, our No Bad Dogs giveaway is going on until the end of this year. All you have to do to enter to win is simply leave a comment in the comments below within three hours of this video being published and you automatically get entered to win some free No Bad Dogs merch. Good. So it just gets her attention a lot more. So instead of her scurrying and choking herself, she's, I have more pressure. So it's two, four, six, eight, ten. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Instead of just one. So it's not as gaggy and choky. She's. It's. It's more harnessing than anything. Just coming up in in unity and going. Let's go up in here. Let's go. Let's go up here. Come on. Come on. Bear. Come on. Let's go up here. Let's go up here. Let's go up here. Yes. What a good job. What a good job that was. What a good job that was. Yes, what a good job that was. Good job, Bear. Come on. Good job. Good job, come on. Yes, good girl. So the goal right now is I want you to just watch her leash pressure. Good girl. Yes, good job, let's get up here. Yes, good girl. Huge. That little circle, very minimal pressure, and then we got up here and she did something. That was, a breakthrough right there. Just that little 15 seconds of compliance tells me that she has the mental capacity to switch that, oh my God, I'm gonna die, off. Which is, it's all, and after that, the tra training is the easiest part. Be behavior modification is hard. It's like going to a therapist after you have PTSD or something. It's so hard, you can't just say, hey, just don't, don't worry about it. It's not that easy. It's I want you to watch her leash pressure. So the less she bounces off that leash, tells us that she's like, it's okay, I'm all right. This is okay, this is gonna work, this is not so bad. And each time that she goes in a circle without constantly pulling is a win for us. Each second that she moves forward in my way without, without pressure is a huge W. 
And the fact that she's getting on here and saying like, okay, I'm gonna do something is just extra. Good girl. See that, loose leash? Good girl. Good girl. Come on, Bear. Come on, Bear. Let's get up there. Up, 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 up. Yes. Well done. What a good job. That was so good. Okay, let's go. Come on. So loose, loose leash. Good. Pop, pop. Okay, this way. Yeah, good job. Let's get up here. Well done. Well done. Good job, Bear. Good job. Okay, let's go. So I go this way. Loose leash, points, 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 points. No run to owner, thought about it, little pressure. Well done, place, good. Yes, good job. So this is really good right here. So see this? This is her making the mental decision without any pressure from that tool to say, okay, I'm gonna listen to this guy, I'm gonna follow this guy. This guy's got the driver's seat, I'm I'm just here. I'm gonna teach her a little bit of leash pressure. She goes against me, she gets those few little taps on the leash. She goes, okay, what am I supposed to do? So it's kind of like bumpers when you're bowling. She goes, bing, 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 and then she starts to figure her way out how to bowl. So now she's going straight with me. Good girl. Good girl, Bear, what a good job. What a good job. What a good job. What a good job. Let's go, place. Let's get up here. Come on. Yay. Good job. That was so good. That was so good. Come here. Come on. There's a good girl. That was so good. Nuzzle there. That was good. So she's starting to trust me. In less than an hour, we've gotten to a point of complete meltdown to, okay, this guy's not so bad. Come here. Yes. Good girl. Good girl. Yes. Good girl. Come on. Let's go. Get up here. Yes. Good girl. She's so cute. All right, everybody, you've made it to the end of the video, which means you guessed it, time for Tom's trivia. All you have to do is simply leave your answers in the comments below. Out of these three things, which comes first to a puppy? Is it A, eyes, B, nose, or C, ears? Leave your answers in the comments right, below. It's all right. <laughs> All right, everybody, thank you so much for joining me today on YouTube. If you haven't yet, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel. If you've liked this video, leave a comment down below and let me know. If you guys wanna purchase some No Bad Dog stuff before the end of the holidays, you certainly can. The description has the link below, or you can just go to buynobaddogs.com. I appreciate you guys checking it out. We are gonna do episode number two with Bear later on next week. So don't forget to turn on your little notification bell so you don't miss anything that we upload here today, later, next year, tomorrow, or before. Peace.